Hello community. Today we're going to talk about graph neural networks and the software implementation. PyG, you are familiar with PyG. What we know already, we know about graph neural networks, we know about graph convolutional networks, we know about message passing, about transformer on graph neural network, on the next level, if you lift up a graph into a more complex topological space, and one of my last videos was on topological message passing. So let's have a look at this topic. I noticed when I make videos and I do presentation, I focus here on the AI part a lot of, on the models, on the implementation. But you know what? If I look at your response and your question I receive from you, I see that you are here, you are in the data part. All the questions you have are more or less concerning about the data preparation, the data pipelines for ML on graphs, for the GNN, for the GCN, for Node2Vec. Everything is here very strictly about data. So it's time I have to learn and I move here to the data and I'm going to tackle with you we, in this video and in the next two upcoming videos, the central problem in machine learning on graphs, ML on graphs, is to find the right way to incorporate the information about the graph structure, so the adjacency matrix, more or less, into your machine learning model. So, you are in luck because we will now focus finally where you have all the questions. Now, just let's be specific. If you increase the topological complexity, at first, you have just a point cloud, a very simple set of, of points. Then you got to connect it and we're going to build a graph. And I showed you in one of my last videos, we can go to simplicial complexes or if you go even more general, we go to cell complexes. But just to make sure, the next two videos will focus on graph neural networks. So we will stick here on this simple case. Beautiful. So here we go. You know, if it's about GNN, about graph neural network, we have two software packages, let's call them. We have PineG and we have DGL. Now, if you look in detail now about this, both packages have some beautiful extension here in the data area, in the data pipeline, and they have some commands and libraries and everything that help you prepare the data for the machine learning model for your PyG implementation. And I'm going to show you here what are the PyG command, what is the way to advance if you want to build a beautiful data pipeline into your ML model, the data integration. Of course, you have the same thing here with DJL. You have also here DJL now deeply extending tending into the data domain, how you prepare the data the intelligent way to do data preparation here. And I have already on my channel quite a lot of videos on DGL, giving you the graph design, the medical example with full coding. I showed you how to do message passing in detail in code on DGL. But of course, we also focused on the theory, on the graph isomorphism problem, on weisfeiler lehmann WL tests. And borrowing here from Pietra Veligovic, I show you here the summary, the three flavors of our GNN layers that we have, and more or less you have three options. Now in the GCN, in our convolutional case, you have the architecture that the features of our neighbors are aggregated with fixed weights. Our CIJs here, or edges here, the fixed weight CIJs. Attentional, the features of the neighbors are aggregated with implicit weights via the attention mechanism. And you know, and I showed you the message passing, this is our workhorse, and we compute arbitrary vectors, messages, to be sent across our edges. If you want a deep dive into this topic, there's a beautiful video by Pietro Velikovic, and I leave you here the link to this YouTube presentation. In general, if you want to have a little bit of a guidance, I would recommend here the top left video for you. 
I had a video on representational learning on graph neural networks where I showed you there are several ways you can tackle GNNs. Either you go with the walk-around theory where we have node to vec. I have a video where I show you the TensorFlow to code, how you can code node to vec. Then in this red envelope video, I show you how Thomas Kipf did this on a graph convolutional network why he came up with the idea, what are the benefits of using GNNs, why GNNs were invented, if you want to know it, and then if you're into the coding, as I already mentioned here, this little DGL video on the message passing algorithm. Now, next two videos, to be clear, going to focus on Pi G. And I'm going to look here at more or less the data pipeline to prepare the data for your ML models. And there's this beautiful torch geometric data API we're going to talk about in the next video. In the next video, I will also show you Cora. If you're not familiar, Cora is a very specific data set that's going to help us understand the complexity of Pi G. We have a network of 2,700 nodes and of about 10,500 edges. Each node describes a document, a scientific document, a publication, and you have two documents are connected with an edge if there exists a citation link in the database between them. So if those two documents link to each other. Now, of course, for with each node, you can create a tensor assignment so you can attach more information to specific nodes and a feature either a node feature or an edge feature is created via a tensor assignment and each node here in our Cora database is described by a feature tensor and how you can go from the step one that you have a document let's say 20 scientific pages and how you can create a feature tensor out of this document. This will be the content of my next video and I show you how to do this in PyG. We will operate with an 1433 dimensional feature vector on each of the 2700 nodes. This vector describes the scientific document and then we have some challenges and I show you how to prepare the data, who run the model to do the evaluation of your ML model in PyG. Of course, you know, only features of a numerical type. This means float, double or integer are allowed in our feature tensor. If you want then to advance to a knowledge graph, I have two videos here on the graph embedding structure of a little bit more complex graphs easy answering questions you might have about knowledge graph. If you're into JAX and the, and the programming language, you have more or less TensorFlow, PyTorch, and JAX. There is a graph neural network specific library on JAX. It's called Giraffe. This explains this beautiful animal here on the top right of your screen. If you are into JAX and you want to jump into JAX and Giraffe, this is the video for you. Or if you're in the classical path, you want to go from Graph Sage to Graph Bird, our transformer model, you have here the video that gives you a description how to go from Graph Sage to Graph Bird. But of course, we then will have a second video and we will fuse our sentence transformer, everything we know about sentence transformer, we will use with graph neural network. We will combine those two spheres and I will use PyG as the programming language. And of course, we will look about the application in code about the torch geometric data dot data commands that we will apply. And just to give you an outlook, I don't want to make it too simple for you. So when we use our common community knowledge about sentence transformer, SBIRT, and when we apply to GNN, graph neural networks, of course we will do it on a little bit more complicated, heterogeneous graph structure. And I will show you what I mean. Simple, you have more than one node type or more than one edge type. 
This is when you call the graph a heterogeneous graph. And there are some complications if you compare, compare it to some homogeneous graph. But more about this than in the second upcoming video. I hope you enjoy this little mini-series of PyTorch code implementation of graph neural networks. And I will focus not only on the ML model, but on the data preparation, how you structure your data, how you design, normalize, distribute your input data to your ML GCN layer model. And I will jump with you right into the code in my next video. Thank you and I see you in a second.